Hi guys, so Channel 4 News interviewed Professor Yvonne Doyle, who's the Medical Director of Public Health England. Now with a title like Professor and Medical Director, you would expect her to speak like a scientist or a doctor. Unfortunately, in this interview, she speaks more like a politician, which is extremely concerning. Let's hear what she had to say. As we head into winter, we know that the virus is more likely to spread in colder conditions. People are indoors and it seems to uh, thrive more in colder conditions as well. But also people uh, from our ONS surveys are dying in, at home and in care homes. Uh, not so many, thankfully, in care homes at the moment, less than 100 recently, but still very sad but quite a few at home, and we still don't have full information about that. If the same groups of people are dying, why are vulnerable people with underlying health conditions not being told to shield? Is that a political decision or a public health decision? Well, in effect, uh, the number of restrictions that are now in place are in some places over and above what was happening with shielding and that uh, those instructions How? and the restrictions follow the epidemiology very carefully as to where the greatest risk is and shielding uh, or having people okay but that was not answering the question he's she's sort of going around the question the question was is it a political political decision or is it a public health decision not to ask people to shield and she's saying, well, the measures that we're putting in go over shielding. But how do they go over shielding? Stay away from everybody for long periods of time also brings its own risks. So this is a very careful balance. None of the restrictions under our current three-tier system in England are as severe as the full national lockdown was earlier on in the year. Why do we think that less severe public health measures are likely to work now when they didn't before? The important thing about the uh, restrictions at the moment is that they are tailored to where the severity of trans transmission of the virus is. <laughs> this, is. this is terrible. You have a professor who's trying to do mental gymnastics to defend the government's position and I'm, I'm pretty sure if she was, you know, interviewed off the record, she would say, this is an absolute disaster. This is not working. But she's saying this, I don't know, to protect her job. Is it to protect Boris Johnson's government? Why is she saying this? Why isn't she just saying, yes, these measures are not working? The chief medical officer said that the, a tier three restriction is not going to be sufficient to bring down on its own the spread. Why isn't she being honest? Highest. Uh, so that, that is one reason why there's a difference between now and uh, the first wave. But the other reason is that this is, there are important national aims as to why this is being done this way at this time, which is that it is important to keep children at school. And that didn't happen in the national lockdown in the first wave. But you can still have a lockdown and just have children go to school. This half-arsed, half-baked measure of tier, uh, tier one, tier two, th tier three, tier one plus was something that was uh, introduced yesterday, I think it was, uh, the concept of tier one plus. Then there'd be what, tier two minus, tier two A, tier two B. It just creates more confusion. And, uh, and as I've said before, you know, somebody could be in tier two and they can move to tier one. Somebody could be in tier three and they could move to tier two. I'm talking about individual people. And also there's no, Boris Johnson has avoided presenting any sort of roadmap out of tier three. How do you get out of tier three? He was asked in parliament by Keir Starmer and he talked about the, the R number. And then Keir Starmer asked, well, is there anything else apart from the R number? Boris Johnson couldn't respond. He didn't know. If the government don't know how you're supposed to get out of tier three, and I'm talking about a community, if the government don't know, then how the hell are the community supposed to follow the rules and get out of tier three? 
And second, it's important as far as possible to keep people in jobs. And the final thing is to try and protect the most. But why? Now you're talking like a politician. You're not talking like a scientist. Scientists don't talk about, well, we need to keep people working. We need to pe have people going into the city centres and buying sandwiches. This, this, is, this is political talk. She's sounding like a politician. And this is extremely dangerous because we need to have a separation between the scientists and the politicians. We can't have politicians talking like scientists. We can't have scientists talking like politicians. Why? Because it creates confusion. It undermines the science. I don't care about the politicians. We can throw the politicians under a bus. They will be replaced. They will be changed in a number of years' time. But science needs to be respected. We can't have po uh, scientists talking like politicians because it undermines the entire effort. Vulnerable. You say that the restrictions are more relaxed now because you want to keep people at school and you want to keep people in jobs. That must mean that there is an acceptable level of deaths. We are at 310 today. Is that an acceptable level of death or do we need more severe restrictions? I am not familiar with this term, an acceptable level of death. <laughs> well, if you're a Tory, <laughs> any any number is an acceptable level of death, as long as it's not, you know, affecting you personally. Um, I understand she's not. There isn't this term, but he's he's not using the term as in this is a standard that the government have set. Um, I hope they haven't. <laughs> that would be extremely concerning. But if, uh, and I've said this before, not about the deaths, but the the number of new cases. The, fo the focus of a lockdown is to get the cases down. Down to a level that you can implement test and trace and isolate. And then you can start opening up society again. And making sure that you're on top of it with a test and trace. And have a circuit breaker if necessary. But hopefully you don't need to do that if you have a robust test, trace and isolate system. But that doesn't exist at the moment. Uh, every death is a tragedy and uh, all the time we work to try and reduce deaths and... Uh, and th that's why we had our eat out to help out scheme. <laughs> because, you know, the pandemic wasn't fully over, but we wanted people to go out and, you know, buy sandwiches and eat pizza and, you know, have a few beers. Because we needed to help the economy. This was insanity. I understand that it was to help the economy, but you need to help the economy when you are over the pandemic, not during it. I've talked about this before. You need to do a reset. You need to close down everything, get the numbers down, and then after you can borrow as much money as you want to restart the economy. But you don't restart the economy while you're still fighting the pandemic. That's w what we're seeing now. Money wasted. It actually helped it seems to be uh, some of the evidence uh, uh, has been presented that the help out, sorry, eat out to help out scheme actually helped spread the pandemic. So you wasted money um, providing money to restaurants that it will eventually have to close down anyway to buy some time for them. And then you facilitated the spread. Insanity. And I'd like to know which scientists supported that. I can guarantee no scientists supported that. Uh, ...with the best possible, both practice, clinical practice, but also guidance as to how to protect the most vulnerable. I accept ultimately that these are political decisions, but SAGE has said we need a circuit breaker lockdown. The independent SAGE scientists have all said we need a lockdown now. Is it your personal view that we need a circuit breaker lockdown. Now, remember, she is the chief, sorry, she is the medical director of Public Health England, and she's been asked a very simple question. Do we need a lockdown now? The other scientists are saying we need a lockdown. You, as a professor, as medical director, do we need a lockdown? 
A circuit breaker lockdown has been examined several times and it is a policy decision as to whether that is implemented. But what's your... But what's... <laughs> I, I let him speak. What medical advice as a public health expert? Would it work? Well, my advice is that we actually take account every day and every week in the right way following... The you understand the problem here, guys? You have a medical director, you have a professor speaking like Matt Hancock, speaking like Boris Johnson, speaking like a politician. She should, me should, she should not be doing this. She should be independent from politics. I understand she represents the government, but she shouldn't be talking like a government minister because she has a certain responsibility. I understand that if she were to, sp to speak the truth and say we need a lockdown, she probably would lose her job. But, or I don't know if she'd actually lose her job, she would be maybe criticized by the government, she may, it may affect her career later on. And she probably sees it as somewhat like uh, Dr. Fauci in America probably saw it as if I criticize the government, they'll just replace me with a yes man or yes woman who will say, yes, the government are doing the right thing. Yes, the government are always right. Uh, we don't need a lockdown. We, whatever Boris decided today, that's what we need. <laughs> um, but this is dangerous because we trust professors. We trust medical directors. We trust uh, experts. And they're sort of throwing us, throwing us under a bus here. The data as we see it now and the interventions that are being offered now with the option of further local restrictions uh, are what is advised now. But the important thing uh, behind your question is that we keep an open mind as to what is and isn't working. No, I mean, my, my question is not complicated. There's nothing behind it. It's a very simple question. Would a circuit breaker lockdown now work to bring down infections and bring the R rate below one. Well, circuit breakers are being implemented in other parts of the <laughs> we, we have to laugh because otherwise we will cry. The question was, would a circuit breaker work? Would a lockdown work? And now she's talking about, well, there are circuit breakers in other parts of the country and there, you know, a circuit breaker. You know what a circuit breaker is? It's, it's a fantastic idea. It, you know where it comes from? It comes from, you know, the idea that on, on the wall, if the current is too high, it cuts off. Isn't that an amazing thing? Do, do you have one in your home? <laughs> oh, my God. UK. So it's very important that we learn from that. But as I say, it's important to keep an open mind and give the interventions that are currently in place, which are restrictive at the level three intervention, very restrictive on people's lives. Yvonne Doyle, thank you very much indeed. No, thank you for nothing, because we learned nothing from that. Well, we, we understood, we learned perhaps that um, the medical director of Public Health England is basically a politician or at least a politician's puppet because she was asked on a number of occasions, would a lockdown work? The scientific community are saying a lockdown is necessary. Would she support it? And she started talking about something else. Now, a lockdown is going to come. France has just gone into lockdown. Um, the UK is in a similar position to where France is when we're talking about new cases. Um, or it's, you know, it's about, I think it's about a week or a week and a half behind France. So a lockdown is coming. Um, Boris Johnson is dead against a lockdown. The government are against a lockdown. But these tiers are not working. All they're doing is they're limiting the spread somewhat, but they're not going to bring the spread way down. You need to bring the spread way down in order to deal with this pandemic correctly. We have seen that lockdowns work. Now, they have to be implemented correctly. And what I'm afraid is going to happen is a lockdown will be imposed eventually by Boris Johnson. But it will be once again a half-arsed measure. It won't work. His critics will say, look, it didn't work. I will be saying it didn't work because it wasn't implemented correctly. It wasn't implemented early enough. 
and it wasn't implemented for a long enough period. What you, I can guarantee what's going to happen is Boris Johnson will implement a, a two-week lockdown or a one-month lockdown after Christmas or something like that. I hope I'm wrong, but we seem to be heading in that direction. Maybe not be after Christmas, but before, just before Christmas. It, it will be... It won't be following the science. The scientists will be saying you need to impose a lockdown immediately. He will try to fit it in in some way that it has the least disruption or whatever. We need to deal with this more correctly. Otherwise, we're just going to be continually imposing new restrictions for the next number of months and maybe the next number of years. I'm sorry to be so much of a downer on this, but I think it's, there are two very important things to take away from this. We need to impose a lockdown and we need to stop politicians influencing how professors and medical directors speak. They should be free to speak their mind to explain how things are in reality and they shouldn't be spinning things for, for the government. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?